Uh, what is your name? Where are you from? And what is your preferred strategy for investing? My name is Sandra Holtmeyer, and I'm from the St. Louis area, St. Charles County specifically. I've lived in St. Charles County for, I don't know, 30 or so years, um, but grew up in Baldwin, uh, Manchester area. And my preferred strategy is, is right now it's rehabbing. Um, I really enjoy flipping the houses, you know, buy that ugly duckling and fix it up and put a happy family in there. Um, but my long-term strategy is really rentals. So I like the rehabbing, but that's not what I'm doing forever. The money from the rehabs is to go buy rentals because that's my investment, my, uh, my retirement plan. So great strategy. So kind of a two-phased Sandra. approach. Great strategies. And I know you've been doing that. I've known you for a little while here and you're really good at it. You come from a good place. And uh, that's one reason you're here today is just sharing, sharing with the people what you've done. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Um, let's just talk about maybe just a couple of specifics that you don't have to get in too deep, but what about, uh, what, what would you say your um, best deal you ever did was? Um, my best deal, you know, sometimes they're surprising when they come up, right? Um, it was I bought a house um, and made it a rental for about three years. And then when they went to um, move out, the market was good. This was a couple of years ago. The market was really booming and um, it had appreciated and I had a lot of equity in it. So I sold it and made about a hundred thousand dollars and only owned it for about three years. So that was my best deal. Nice. Those are great deals. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Need a few more of those. Well, those are those are always good, and and I, I know if you just you know kind of like what we've always done, you just try to make each deal a good one, and you know mm -hmm. if you get a base hit most of the time, every once in a while you get the home run, and they kind of make up for it. Yeah, so, yeah. How about your worst deal? What do you think the worst deal is did you, you ever did? And it doesn't have to be the most money lost or anything. It just could be something that just didn't sit right with you, and what right. you from it too. Right. Um. Let me think. I've had some interesting ones and, you know, I love a challenge. So some people say, how can you keep doing that? Or that would have been terrible. I'm like, well, I just look at it as a challenge. Um, probably one that I held really long. Um, I bought a house up in Florissant and unincorporated way up there by Blackjack by the river. And uh, it was a two ish acre lot and it needed septic. So when I bought it, I knew it needed septic and I'd been turning down uh, properties that had septic issues because I was just afraid of it. I didn't know anything about it. So I thought, you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna learn it one way or the other. So, um, oh boy, when they dig out a septic tank, it's like digging out something the size of a school bus out of the yard. It was, it was a great learning experience um, from that perspective. Although it really took a long time and um, there was, a a lot that had to happen around that. And so it ended up being like a six month rehab. So I had a lot of holding costs, you know, all those things that go along with that. And then I had so much equipment on the driveway off and on that the asphalt driveway wasn't in great shape to start with, but that really tore it up. So um, the septic project I had budgeted for, but I didn't budget for a whole new driveway. And um, because of the septic, there was a lot more mold um, in the basement than what I could see or knew to look for. I knew there was some, but when I had the company come out and uh, test for it and go to remediate it, we ended up having to gut the entire basement. So what I thought would just be a little bit of mold treatment and removal ended up being a gut. So I ran way over budget on that. It took way too long. So, you know, it wasn't a terrible deal, but just frustrating to do a lot of work and really not make, I mean, I, I, I made a couple thousand dollars, but you know, for six months worth of work, it was not a good payday, but the home was beautiful. The people that bought it were thrilled, you know, so that's good. But um, just, you know, ran into a bunch of unknowns that took a lot longer than expected and caused me to incur other costs along the way. Mm -hmm. What do you think you learned from that? I mean, it'd be because mm -hmm. you obviously stayed with your rehabbing uh, at this point, because that can be very challenging. And I know a lot of people quit at a point like that, because when you don't budget for something and you do know you find some unknown things that come mm -hmm. up, uh, what would you say your best lesson may be just out of that particular deal? Um, I would have had the mold remediation company come right away sooner, maybe even when I was bidding on the house, you know, because um, they'll come and do free estimates. 
and you know, I always learn from this. So now I know some things to look for, but um, yeah, just, you know, we're buying these as is many times and that's okay, but usually you have 24 hours or so um, to look at them. So I, if I see mold and I'm afraid it's worse than I, than it could be, especially because the septic backed up, you know, it's not like there was just a dripping washing machine or something, you know, it was pretty serious. I would have gotten them involved sooner. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great lesson that we, you know, everybody can, we can all learn from because yeah, septics can be a challenge in themselves. That's a whole different mm -hmm. problem. And depending right. on the size lot, you had a big yard, but you still have a lot of things, a lot of people involved with those. Right. So uh, yeah, that's gr a great thing to know. Now, if uh, always a question I always like to, to ask you though, too, is if, what kind of advice would you give to yourself if you were to start over again today, Sandra? Just knowing just... what you know now. Yeah, there's a couple of things I would have done differently. I would have um, hired an assistant sooner. I did hire one year too, but just to make that investment up front, you know, it was like an uphill battle trying to learn and do everything myself. So I really felt like that I could have gone faster. Um, but knowing what I know now, you know, maybe not then, but um, mm -hmm. that's one thing. And then um, really automating more of my systems early on. So again, my assistant could have helped with that, like really get with someone, whether, you know, they work for you directly or you outsource, you know, marketing and some of those things just to get those leads going. So, you know, it, it's hard to get your business started from zero, you know, so that's, that's what I would have done. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I was kind of the same way. I think a lot of it has to do with fear. You know, you just don't yeah. want to get out there so much because once you do it, you know, you get a little bit of experience. You say, well, yeah, if I would have done that sooner, look how far mm -hmm. I would be. But then again, you wouldn't have the depth of the knowledge that you have right now either. Right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, hiring mm -hmm. an assistant, I know it's, we've drug our feet a lot of times with a lot of people and it's best a lot of times just to get in there and do it right. Just like what you just shared with us with the, uh, the mold, you know, go to the expert right out of the gate. They've already done it and yeah. just see what you're up against. So great yeah. advice. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us today? I mean, um, that you could think of. I would just say really network like crazy. You know, I don't pay for many leads anymore. I did in the beginning, um, but now just being involved in groups like this and just letting everybody know what you do. It's amazing over time when people see that you've stuck around, you will just start getting leads because people will say to me all the time, oh, you've been doing this a while. I see, you know, your videos on Facebook or, you know, it's just, there's a lot of new investors, but when people see that you have staying power and you stick with it, then mm -hmm. that gives you a little bit more credibility than you know, you might not otherwise have. Well, you do add a lot of value too. And just like you said, you stuck with it. I mean, cause not everything is easy and fun, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, but um, we appreciate that. Is there um, anything that you're looking for out there? Is there any, any particular uh, thing that you could think of that you'd like to share with people that, in case they would like to get in touch with you? Um, I, I'm looking for more rehabs and, and rentals. So, you know, we all know the market's really tight right now. And prices have been up. And so a lot of people think their house is worth all this now because the one down the street did or everything else has. But when they need work, we know what that's like. So if um, my best referral source is, um, you know, grandma or grandpa went in the nursing home, we've got this house. Nobody wants to take the time or money to fix it up. So those are great leads for me. And I'm not afraid of the mold and the basement problems and um, really anything but a house that's just like completely burned out. Mm -hmm. But um, How about yeah. certain areas? Is, is there certain areas that you specialize in? I know you do probably have a little niche there. Yeah, I um I do a lot in Florissant and St. Charles County. Those are my two main areas, but I've done, you know, West County, South County. Um, I'm really not doing anything in the city. Um, it's just so much driving for me. And I love the hundred year old brick homes, but I've, uh, I prefer not to do those anymore. But, you know, if someone has and a need, I still wholesale. So if there's something that I'm not interested in, I can certainly help move it along or find a buyer, then I'm happy to do that too. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time today, Sandra. And is there any contact information you would like to share with anybody if they would like to get in touch with you, if they do come across a, a project that they know you could help with? Yes, please. My name is Sandra Holtmeyer and my phone number is 636 -856 -3358. And my email is sholtm at gmail.com. Thank, Thank you very you, much, Sandra. Appreciate it very much.